let's talk about you, Shannon Q, the number 10th edition. Uh, I had originally had plans to do this with somebody else tonight, but for various reasons, I'm still kicking around that particular idea. But tonight, though, we are actually going to have my friend. Oop, hang on. I got. Uh, do I have any videos I got playing in the background? One second, we fix. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, so I have my friend Wyatt Minkus here. People might remember Wyatt from years gone by. He was a friend of my channel and, and the Great Debate community. And he's been in the last, I don't know, year or so doing his own thing with the religion. And I thought it would be a perfect time to kind of bring him back because he just was on G-Man's channel the other day and have a discussion with Shannon. So we're going to do a Let's Talk About You with Shannon Q. Shannon Q is going to kind of get to know him a little bit, talk to him a little bit. They're going to kind of exchange their ideas and positions, and then maybe towards the end I'll kind of jump in only because I haven't really talked to Wyatt for a while, and, you know, he used to be pretty tight. So, <laughs> right, Wyatt? Right, right, right. We, we were tight, weren't we? Say kind that of. five times fast. Right, Wyatt? Yeah. Kind of. Kind of? <laughs> Okay. Just kind That's of. as much endorsement as Steve gets. Kind of. He begged me to come in here. Steve, are you having a hangout? Please let me in. No. No, we were friends. Right? Uh, come on, Wyatt. Be nice. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. And then I told him about Hoven and everything went to hell. Anyway, so I'm going to just mute and shut the hell up so you guys can have your conversation. And uh, we'll see where it goes. Hi, Wyatt. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Um, good. Can you hear me, by the way? I can hear you. I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me okay? I'm doing well. Okay, good. That's good. All right. Good. So it's nice to meet you. Thank you for coming to, to chat with me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it whenever anybody's willing to come and have a conversation, uh, especially if they're complex conversations. So okay. I'm Shannon. And uh, you've, I believe Steve said that you've seen one or two of the conversations that I've had in the past. Uh, do you mind sharing with me which ones it was that you that you saw? I, yeah, I don't think I'll recall uh, me having seen any of your conversations. Oh, oh you <laughs> haven't? Okay, that's even better. That's great. Okay, so I'll explain a little bit to you about what I do. So I I meet with people that have positions that uh, in a multitude of areas that are likely to be in opposition to my own. So so Steve has a general idea of, of what my positions are on, on many things. And he likes to, I suppose, introduce me to people who who have positions that are different than mine. So I'm assuming that you have at least one or two uh, positions that, that, you that you hold strongly that are probably opposed to my own. And we just have, you know, a, a nice conversation about where we differ. So did you want to share a little bit with me and everybody who's watching about yourself? Uh, sure. Um, uh, my name is White Mikus. I've uh, been away from Google Plus for, uh, I don't even know how long, a couple years maybe. Um, yeah, I've been away from it for a, long, for a long time just because there's been a lot of drama in the GDC community and uh, kept myself aloof from it from for a long time. Um, and plus I was too busy to deal with it. Um, but, um, yeah, now I'm back a little bit, um, we, by, uh, uh, Steve McRae's invitation and my position is I will believe Christian and, uh, Steve McRae mentioned Kent Hovind, which, uh, yeah, I've been getting away from him, but I still am willing to use one of his jokes. Um, I believe the Bible is true. Um, I even, uh, from cover to cover, I believe the cover of mine, um, but yeah, so that's my position. Okay. So when you say from cover to cover, or would you consider yourself to be a young earth creationist, an old earth creationist? Uh, a, are you a biblical inerrantist? Do you, do you see a little room within the Bible for interpretation? Right, because I find that with different people, that means different things when they say true from cover to cover. So would you mind elaborating a little bit for me, please? Um, as with any historical book, uh, as the Bible is a historical book uh, written uh, in historical narrative and also poetic narrative, uh, got taken in its context. Um, as with the age of the earth question, it um, it is open for interpretation because... Um, I do recommend uh, um, on theistic, the theistic evolution question. Um, one of the best people to uh, learn about that from is my friend General Han Solo and okay. my other friend Wayne Fillmore. 
Okay. Um, they expound a lot on the, uh, and they are theistic evolutionists. And of course, uh, William Lane Craig, um, I think he's a theistic evolutionist or leaning more towards that. Yeah, I would say he is. I would say he is. Okay. So you, you believe that it's open to interpretation a little bit mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't believe that it's a literal interpretation of the Bible. So uh, I have a few other questions for you. Well, I, we haven't interacted at all before. I, did, I didn't hear your name until probably about two to three hours ago. So uh, is, is there any, to, you don't know anything about me at all, I'm assuming. Is no. that, that's fair? Okay. <laughs> So to give you a little bit of my background, uh, like I said, my name is Shannon Q. I'm, I'm an anti-theist. So uh, I'm an atheist, obviously. And uh, I believe that it, in many ways, uh, adhering to religious doctrines can be harmful and limiting for people. Um, I, I'm assuming that obviously you may have some questions uh, about that. So what do you mind if I ask what your position is or opinions are on on people like me? On people like you? Um, yeah. I've had a lot of good conversations with atheists. Um, I'm not going I'm not going to lie. Okay. Um, Great. Um, as long as you're willing to have a conversation with me, um, there um, my first encounter with um, atheists um, came from the Kent Hoven, I would say the Kent Hoven of atheism, uh, female Kent Hoven of atheism, Jacqueline Glenn. Okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> I've never watched one of her videos, but I know who she is. Okay, yeah. Um, her videos are horrible. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, Fair enough. Yeah, beautiful, uh, beautiful girl, horrible content. Um, yeah, she needs to study up before she humiliates herself with another YouTube video against Christianity. Okay. That's my, uh, what's, uh, what about her positions? It, do, do you think she's, you, she's humiliating herself? Um, the Jesus mythicism, which, uh, almost all serious scholars have, or the, uh, the copycat theories, the theorists of, uh, Jesus mythicism would, um, any serious scholar would laugh at her would laugh at her about oh, because she's a she's a mythicist i i presume yeah yeah i hold a position on that of uh, essential neutrality i don't think it makes a difference to me whether or not he was a historical figure or not i still don't believe that he was uh any sort of representation of of a god as i don't believe in a god uh so i don't, I don't think you'll come up to opposition with me there um i do believe that religions can in some ways be harmful. Uh, what particular denomination of religion would you say that you adhere to? Um, I would, well, I don't adhere my, bound myself by any particular denomination of uh, Christianity. Okay. Um, but I try to keep my theology as close to biblical as possible. Um, okay. But I, um, denomination wise, the one that I feel most comfortable going to church at is a Baptist church. A Baptist church. Okay. Mm -hmm. So were you always a Christian? Were you born or did you convert into Christianity? Um, yeah, I was, uh, raised with, uh, biblical standards. Um, actually, um, I, I came out a few years ago. Um, I was, part of what's called the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or uh, most commonly the Mormon Church. And uh, I've had a lot of skeptical thoughts about that, uh, based mostly on their stance on the Trinity and how it contradicts the Book of Mormon and um, the modern stance on, yeah, um, their, their stuff on salvation. Um, so um, I've recently... Um, got out of that and more into a biblical theology of sorts, but I still enjoy talking to Mormons, uh, uh, you know, because I've interacted with them most of my childhood life. So. Oh, okay. So is that the denomination that you were raised in or were you raised in a different denomination? Um, when we first started going to church around when I was, I think 10 or 12 years old, uh, um, on a regular basis, we started attending the uh, LDS church. 
What's the LDS church? Latter-day Saints? Yeah, Latter-day Saint Church. Okay, is that... And, uh, yeah, it's a long story on how me and my parents... Uh, me and my parents left for two totally different reasons. Um, okay. I left more because of the theology. My parents left for more personal reasons. Um, but I prefer not to share that. Oh, no, absolutely. You don't, do, you don't have to share anything that you don't feel comfortable sharing. Absolutely not. I, and I'd never push it. So, <clears throat> so right now you would identify as non-denominational, but the church that you attend is a Baptist church. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you have a YouTube channel as well, uh, I'm assuming, or, or so I've been told. Uh, yes. Yes, I ha do have a YouTube channel, and uh, it's um, my name. Uh, you can find it easily. Okay. My website, blazeofhope.weebly.com. Um, um, I've had uh, debates with uh, w debates with numerous people. Had discussions uh, with Steve McRae. Uh, mm -hmm. I've mirrored his videos on my channel where I've had discussions with Steve McRae. Um, sure. What What's your main focus on your channel? Like, if you if you had to say that there was one main objective that your channel has, what would that objective be? I would say. Uh, providing Christians with uh, free information on how to defend the Christian faith against uh, its attacks because any worldview must be defensible. And okay. It's, and so I think all information on how to defend the Christian faith must be uh, free for the Christian to access especially if he's uh, going into uh, ministering to uh, groups like Muslims, Mormons. Okay. Um, what have you. So it, I've always had difficulty understanding the, the concept of, of defending the faith. When you say defending the faith, uh, what, what does that mean? Does that mean that if somebody is, is raising a question with you, it's, it's a manner uh, with which to ju to justify your own individual position, or is it, or does that mean to you that to the public you're defending the stance of being a Christian? Um, well, it, well, we are living in the age of information, and uh, information, uh, true and false, about any worldview is um, on the rise, um, and with that would come objections to. Christianity, both uh, good objections and, uh, what should I say, uh, dumb objections, even objections that were long gone or um, should have been dead a long time ago, like okay. with the uh, Horus theory uh, that should uh -oh. have gone a long time ago or being raised on the internet again, you know. Oh, the Horus theory. So you, is the Horus theory that you're referring to the theory that Jesus was uh, a a narrative character that mirrored the other similar mythologies that predate Christianity, such as Horus. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it also confits, uh, uh, yeah, um, the post hoc ergo propter, uh, propter hoc is, uh, is the fallacy it commits. But um, Okay. And so I do not have the information uh, readily available, but um, that's been debunked by Christians and non-Christians alike. And it's been an embarrassment to atheists. And atheists have said, hey, Jacqueline, stop using this. Because, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, you know uh, because, it, because it's an embarrassment. First, okay. So that's, that's not an argument that I know a great deal about. So I, to tell you a little bit more about me, I came to my atheism via reading the Bible. Essentially, I was I was a very very devout Anglican. I was a Christian, and uh, I came to a point in my life where I turned to to my faith in order to I, I guess look for for support in a in a time of difficulty. And I had realized that I had only ever had my understanding of my faith dictated to me. I had never actually investigated it myself. I'd never really delved into the Bible. So I decided I was going to read it cover to cover uh, with the expectation that that would re-solidify my faith. And it actually had 
the opposite effect. So mm. the Bible is a, essentially drove me away from Christianity because it it posed a lot of questions to me um, that nobody that within the faith that I approached that was supposed to be an authority was able to answer. So uh, I don't I don't th which is one of the reasons that I said that the historicity of Jesus isn't particularly relevant to me uh, or or something that I. I've really invested myself in in researching because I, I found the contradictions within the Bible and and some of the what I saw as morally negligible or morally reprehensible actions that God himself took d drove me from the faith and and made me realize that this this perhaps wasn't true and that was a difficult thing to go through so what would you say to somebody like me somebody who's an atheist that isn't an atheist that that that's you know i'm not hope to to get christianity i guess or or and i, and I don't make false assertions that, that i don't feel like i can support but i feel like the bible in and of itself is contradictory and in some places reprehensible hmm. um yeah, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. And, um, well, first of all, yeah, we're not even going to get into that. Um, we can but... get into whatever you want. I'm really easy to talk to, I promise. I've, I've got broad shoulders. I can take it. I can take it. Okay. Whatever you got to so, say, say it. I'm good. Okay. So, um, someone like you, um, that you find something in the uh, Bible reprehensible, um, would you... Uh, if you raise an objection that was that that when you claimed at this point the Bible is morally reprehensible, the God of the Bible is morally reprehensible at this stage, mm -hmm. and someone actually answered that objection, mm -hmm. would you still raise that objection? Uh, if somebody gave a cogent counter argument, I'd absolutely be be willing to. I hate to use the word concede, but I would be. I'd be willing to reconcile that point but I, th I think there's so many points that it would be difficult to get through all of them but if you would like to give one a try if that's the exercise that you'd like to go through i'm happy to do so um not anywhere near a biblical scholar um so okay. <laughs> that's fine not nor am i <laughs> we're on an even uh, keel um, i would recommend a book uh um i think it's is god a moral monster by i don't even remember his name but um okay it's one that Frank Turk actually recommended uh, in one of his debates. Is got a moral, I think. Right. So, what's the crux um, of, of that book? That book is to, I think, answer some objections that um, atheists raise against the God of the Bible. And actually, um, um, I actually had a question from. Uh, from an atheist that um, I actually did not have an answer to. And I feel as people raise objections, and this is why I have remained a Christian all this time, mm -hmm. that every time an objection comes from, an, from a non-believer that, um, that I did not have the answer to at the time, mm -hmm. um, I have found answers either by searching it or by uh, by my brothers and my good brothers in Christ that have actually had that to them and they've actually had their objections answered, that objection answered. And so they uh, relayed it on to me. Okay. Have you ever had any individual objections? So have, when you read the Bible, did any objections come up for you or, or did you accept it all and, and not have any objections when you, when you went through? Um, I wouldn't say they were objections, but they were points of, uh, where it needed clarification where, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were, uh, Different. The narratives, were, yeah, the narratives were different from each other. Yes. Um, 
very much but so. that's what's to be expected from any historical book uh if they're too alike then as uh jay warner wallace puts it if they're too alike then it's suspect that they collaborated on the story but if they're Interesting. that there are minor differences here and there um then uh it seems more of a reasonable account and he was a skeptic before he became a christian and uh so was uh lee strobel uh book i got here behind me is a case for christ uh indeed yes <laughs> good old lee strobel he was a reporter i believe wasn't he before he yeah. he converted to christianity yeah. right okay so i haven't read that book so you did so you came up to the differences between the gospels and the way you were able to reconcile yourself with the differences between the gospels was that if they hadn't have been different it that would have been suspect as mm -hmm. opposed to okay so well, I find it, do you, do you not find that they escalated though? Like if, if you put them in the order that they were written chronologically, the, I can't remember the exact order right now. I'm so sorry, but you, you can um, see that are, you can yeah. see that there's almost an embellishment of the story that I think things like that see, actually, are difficult um, to me. Actually, I, it's interesting that you raised that objection. Um, <laughs> Have you have you watched any uh, Muslim versus Christian debates? I have not. No. Is this something okay. that you do as a pastime or or as as a point <laughs> as of a interest? As a, well, as a point yeah. of interest. Sorry, that was the wrong word okay. to choose. Okay, so um, a guy named Shabir Ali, who's one of the uh, best scholars, uh, well, one of the best scholars in regards to Christianity as a Muslim on the topic. Um, has pointed out that Mark comes first, then Matthew, then Luke, then John. And okay. uh, he makes the argument uh, for the deity of Christ, for instance, that um, from Mark, that there's little to no evidence that Jesus claimed to be divine or was divine. And then it evolves the theology later on. And um, I mean, I laughed and called him a bullface liar right in his face. But um, <laughs> why? <laughs> why you? Why? Uh, why though? Because, why? Why is that a soundless thing? Does why? A bit because if you take a plain reading in order, uh, do you not see how somebody could see it as being embellished? Like the amount of of people that well, found it, that his ascent into stuff. heaven became just far more glorious by the time you get to John. Mm -hmm. No. It, why well, is it baseless? I mean, yeah. Well, I think it's baseless because in the earliest uh, gospel that he would claim would be Mark. Right. Mark actually uh, has a claim by Jesus that he he is, he has a kingdom that will never pass away. All nations shall serve him. He actually makes that claim, and for him to say that there is no evidence in Mark to substantiate that. Jesus is divine is ludicrous because we have in the earliest gospels that uh, that very writing the earliest gospel according to his standards so that one that one point i can see mm -hmm. so you you've attached yourself to one one of the points uh, in the uh, argument uh, that he's that, that there was no evidence within mark that jesus was divine but that passage to your mind and and a uh, that's a fair statement is evidence so what about the remainder about the at the escalation of his story and and how it it seems as though it's it's legend building as though people are expounding upon it to make it you know more glorious and uh, as you look at the I chronology think there, I, mean, I think there is such, you know, a little bit of evidence behind that but i think the evidence is uh weak to say the least um, okay. that's that's my opinion it's it's weak okay what what about um, it is weak um that um there's another passage in mark and muslims like to take things out in the bible out of context all the time uh okay. um where you read two verses later where jesus said uh why do you say i'm good there is no one good that besides god alone and then two verses later it actually contradicts uh, what the muslims are claiming that jesus said 
Mm -hmm. um, um, pick up, you know, sell everything you have, pick up your cross, your cross and follow me. Now, the question is, if Jesus was not claiming to be, uh, was not claiming to be good as denying his goodness, why would he said follow him? Why would he have said, okay, so the first passage says that he's in Mark. Do you mind repeating the first passage for me again, please, Wyatt? Mark 18, uh, somebody came up to him and said, uh, um, hold on, good master. Uh, um, yeah, and then Jesus says, uh, what do you call me good? There's none good besides God alone. Okay. And then a couple verses later, it says, um, uh, sell everything you have, pick up your cross and follow me. And um, my question is, if Jesus was denying his goodness mm -hmm. uh, a couple of verses before, why, why did it say follow him? Okay, I so that, I heard different things in that passage. I heard if he said there's none good except God alone, and he's a part of the Trinity, and he he himself instantiates God, then why would he have said that? Why would he have said that? Why would he have said there is no good except God alone, like that he's not good? Wouldn't, wouldn't that separate him from God? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I think that he was trying to get him to acknowledge who he was, but um acknowledge who he was as di as divine but he said why do you call me good yeah was that a denial of his goodness was it a denial of his see that yeah I'm, I'm finding myself it's difficult to reconcile myself with a couple of of things in that passage i mean he can he can say that he's not good and still want people to follow him if he sees himself as a prophesizer or a, pro a prophet sorry if he sees himself as as a prophet he he What's may acknowledge ever? that he's not as good as god but still want because no one is based on the biblical narrative uh, as good as god and he himself was human in in this context if you're looking at, at Mark in that context. Um, Why would you want to follow somebody who by their own admission is not a good person? Well, if you're looking at that, well, well, you just said that Jesus said by, so if Jesus admitted that he's not a good person, then I'm back to the initial contradiction. Like there's a bunch of, of issues I have with both of those passages. Do you see why I might have issues with those Hold passages? On, uh, yeah. Are they not fair objections to raise? Okay. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah, hold on. Uh, somebody's in the room. So, um, yeah, I'm mute here. So, what was your question again? <laughs> oh, was I on mute for a second? I'm sorry. Okay. No, so, no, 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 no. Not me? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, um yeah so what was the question again my question so yeah. my question was I, I have a couple of questions about that passage if he if he said no one is good except god alone wouldn't that wouldn't that be him admitting that he was separate from god uh i wouldn't i wouldn't say that no okay i think that would bring into the passage okay but he flat out said that no why would you call me good no one is good except right. for God alone. And then you say that right. even, that but, but then you say, why would people follow him, even though he just said that he wasn't good unless he was God? Yeah, so would, would you believe that the people innately understood that he was God? What, what uh, reason yes. would they have to follow him anyway, if he had just told them that he wasn't good? I think, well, he didn't tell him he wasn't good. Um, he said, he asked a question. Uh, you're running into that, saying that just because he asked a question, why do you call me good? Um, but didn't he just, but after that, didn't he say no one is good except God alone? Yeah, no one is good beside, but God alone, I think would be an admission of his deity, especially when it comes to a couple of verses later. Okay, um, let me understand. I, can, can I, I just want to stick on this because I'm not understanding. So he said, why do you call me good? And I want to understand your logic. Because obviously there's a reason that you interpret it that way. So if I'm understanding the way you see it, he says, why do you call me good? 
no one is good except God alone. And that's him telling people that he's as good, he is God and thus is good. Yeah, especially when it comes to two verses later where it says, sell, sell everything you have, pick up your cross and follow me. Right. So it's the why do you call me good that confuses me. Is is it is it as though from your perspective is he saying why do you why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone, and that's his way of saying. I am good. Yeah, I'm you're good you're God. calling me good because I'm because I'm God, and that's that the, the, that's that's him saying this is why you are calling me good. I think yeah, I think so. Um, okay. Again, that would be my interpretation, and my interpretation is fallible, but. Um, Sure. And based on other things that uh, Christ himself has said, uh, more specifically, uh, when he was talking to uh, Satan in, uh, I think it was Mark 4. Okay. Um, where uh, Satan was tempting him and he says, it is written that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. But Satan was tempting him. He wasn't tempting God. Uh, okay. Um, so he wasn't tempt if jesus wasn't god then uh he wouldn't be tempting god um, okay that, a, this is another confusing one the, the trinity confuses me in these in these circumstances <laughs> uh, it confuses, it confuses <laughs> yeah. me too. because how can um, how can they be one and the same mm -hmm. and in him speak of himself as separate right like mm -hmm. it, he's so he says to Satan, you, you cannot tempt the Lord thy God. So is he referring to himself in this context as God? I think he is. Okay. Um, because, because he wasn't tempting anyone else but Jesus, right? Right. Okay. Right. So, so what's the meaning of that passage from your perspective? The meaning of that passage is... And then a couple of verses later, and a couple of verses later gets even more interesting. Okay, I'd um, love to hear more, more about what you think. Okay. You, um, it says, uh, worship the Lord thy God. Him only shall we worship. So now, now he went from I am God mm -hmm. to now worship God. So it's I am God, worship me. And I love the Muslim objection. It's a lovely answer to the Muslim objection. Where did Jesus say, I am God, worship me? So I I like that passage. Um, I, I fall in love with that passage uh, uh, when it comes to the deity of Christ. And yes, I know the Trinity is, I mean, tough to understand, tough. Tough to it is, especially when he looks and says, you know, my, my father, why have you forsaken me mm. when he's on the, like, it's, it's difficult. Can you understand from my perspective how it's di different to reconcile a lot of those things? I mean, it seems like a human, his narrative seems so much like a human narrative, particularly in Mark. Mm -hmm. And he, he's, he's very humanized. So it, it's, and he doesn't. I mean, he and he doesn't. He speaks to God. That would be speaking to yourself. Like, why would he be asking God questions if they're one and the same? Why would he be praying to Him if they're? That would be a modalistic concept, not a uh, not a Trinitarian concept. Have you studied the difference between modalism and uh, Trinitarianism? Uh, no, it, no, I have not. It a little while back during the. Uh, during the Council of Nicaea, where uh, modalism would say that yes, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one in the same, right? Are are one one in the same person, and mm -hmm. that person is God. Trinitarians would say, um, um, I would actually recommend to you this book. Uh, and I have a I long reading list from you, Wyatt. <laughs> You're gonna have to message uh, me. This. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, I actually would recommend this book for my. Uh, um, have you heard of Dr. James White? No, actually, I have um, not. No. Okay. Um, well, um, Dr. James White uh, is one of the guys who uh, uh, debates on the whole spectrum of theology. He's he's debated everything from uh, um, uh, 
gay Christian alliance to uh, Roman Catholics to Mormons to atheists. Uh, he's debated David Silverman, which he humiliated David Silverman. Okay. Silverman but I digress. Um, um, but his de basic definition is within the one being that is God, there exists eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons, namely the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, that is a summary of what's called the Athanasian Creed, which came out shortly after the Nicene Creed in the 400s AD, okay. um, which, um, which expounds on uh, the Trinity in more detail, um, actually. So... Um, you, you subscribe more so to Trinitarianism based on, on my understanding than to modalism. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, for the same reason, for the same reasons, uh, yes, uh, Christ did go through great pains to uh, separate himself from the Father, and we can see that in numerous passages, but we also see that he's also described as God. He's, uh, he actually described himself uh, as the Lord sitting on the right hand of power. And okay. um, so that's um, clearly separate from God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, no, that's so there's there's two. Um, have you read Alan Siegel's work called The Two Powers in Heaven? Throughout the Old Testament, we see I can almost promise you that heaven. whenever you say the words have you read, the answer is going to be probably no. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, that yeah, that's not smart, you and I want. We read yeah, we read be... different books. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, once you get me started on the Trinity, I, yeah, it's pretty No, hard keep to going. Study, I, enjoy, you know? I enjoy I enjoy the, the, these types of conversations because I have a lot I have a lot of questions about the Bible <laughs> and okay. about Christianity in general. Like I the the fact that it's so subjective, the fact that essentially right now what we're we're arguing over i mean i brought up an objection and the answer to that objection is well there's this subject there's this group of people that their subjective interpretation a lot uh, can counter that objection however uh, there's this group of people that their subjective interpretation yeah. can't counter that objection right. Be right. because you can it's so malleable that it can be interpreted an infinite number of ways and if it's capable of being interpreted in an infinite number of ways, you can, you can always point to, you know, you know, some subjective interpretation that answers the question, but that doesn't really objectively answer any question. You know um, what I mean? I mean, it's the same with any work of literature, correct? Well, yeah, I don't yeah. worship any works of literature. I don't, I don't mold my life around any you know, works of literature. I don't allow any works of literature to dictate how, how, how the lens through which I view the world and make decisions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and this is why I don't, you know, I'm not dogmatic unless, um, the Bible dogmatically says something. Oh, okay. um, yeah. So I'll never be dogmatic unless the Bible says for me to be dogmatic on something then i'll be dogmatic what's an instance but, of that that's an um, interesting statement to me um that there that there is god uh, okay god yeah well that's fair for, ex <laughs> that's for fair. existence <laughs> um that christ died on the cross um okay. died was buried he rose again um okay. that's uh, those are all uh, all dogmatic statements that christians um throughout the spectrum agree on um we also i mean there's we also agree on uh the deity of christ um to one degree or another um be it modalism be it arianism be it uh trinitarianism um so i mean if if you're going to hold a group of people mm -hmm. um that follows something to a line of you can't dis you can't disagree you must have total unity you can't disagree about anything sure um, that how long do you think that group's gonna last if you tell them they can't disagree even though something is completely subjective and open to interpretation and easy to di disagree on probably not right. very long because you're mandating right. them to think a certain way and nobody wants to be mandated to think a certain way 
So of course not. The mm. but that that brings me back to to my question. If if this is supposed to be you know the inerrant word of God that t- can unite us all, so that we will understand and recognize Him. Why is it so subjective and open to interpretation? And I'm so sorry, my son is yelling my name. Steve, can you jump in for one second? <laughs> sure. Okay. Where are we going with okay. this? Okay. Um, so why is it so open to interpretation? Is uh, because you know we have. Um, some fundamental concepts that we all agree upon uh, that Jesus died on the cross according to the scriptures that uh, he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and uh, all other things are open to interpretation and uh, you will never find two groups that agree on any two things you know right uh, but I think Sharon, Shannon would probably throw back the the objection that even if you have those core type beliefs why is there so many different denominations but so vastly different positions when god is supposed to be the author of not the author of confusion and you know we 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 go way back so we've had disagreements especially when it comes to science and a few other things so if god is telling one person like you such information and you're saying hey believe me because i have this truth because i have this direct line to, uh, to god and and you presuppose you still have the presuppositional argumentation right why mm-hmm. okay so you presuppose god exists mm-hmm. um, and then i take look at another christian who says yeah you know what i also believe that jesus died on the cross but i don't believe a, a, this narrative that man walked with dinosaurs or or the the age of the earth is seven thousand years old here's two different christians that supposedly are having information from the same deity and they both can presuppose that same deity but then you have to ask, well, how you know that part of that information you're getting from the deity, such as Jesus dying on the cross, is equal to the, the information of the age of the earth, when we know one of those is false for certainty. And by the way, hmm. Shannon's back now, but I, I stepped into her shoes Sorry. in her Sorry. size uh, eight high heel stilettos. They're nine, but and I don't wear high heels. <laughs> yeah, you should try it. It's quite comfortable, but we'll leave Are it there. Okay, well, you can I you wear that. Don't judge me. What I do on my weekends in my own business. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Thank you. I think this is one of the beauties of Christianity. Um, that is that it is such a diverse group with so many diverse opinions on uh, so many topics, but all believe on that core doctrine that the gospel is Christ died on the cross for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and rose again the third day, you know. Um, but um I think it's beautiful that we do have such a diverse group of Christians. Um, and w- when you ask the question, uh, how, can, how can one person be a young earth creationist and another Christian be an evolutionist? Um, I mean, uh, I wouldn't be dogmatic on either one of those positions because I don't know the positions. I don't know the positions for well, but um, it all comes down to, uh, you know, God revealing himself in, in the two different ways. He revealed himself first by scripture, and then he revealed himself by nature, science. Um, he, so, God reve- revealed himself by science? Yeah, by, first by scripture and then by, by uh, science. Um, okay, that, one's, that one confounds me. How did um, God reveal himself by science? Because I, I find the more, the, the more we find out through science, the, the less oh, pockets there are for God to fit into. Um, I would not say that. Um, okay. Um, um, back when the... Uh, and this is a bit of a history lesson. Back in the 1940s, I believe, uh, the Big Bang Theory was um, first being theorized. Um, and mm-hmm. actually, I learned this from, uh, what's his name? King Crocoduck. Um, ah. In his debate with uh, Kent. Um, and sure. actually, actually, I learned that long before then uh, from Frank Turk. Um, it was a theist named George, George Latimer. Um, mm-hmm. I think his name was, uh, who was Lemaitre. a Catholic priest at the time in Lemaitre? Lemaitre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Belgian priest. Uh, George, Le- George Lemaitre. 
And sure. he was a Catholic priest at the time. And most of the objections that came from the to the Big Bang Theory were came came from those who um, saw that there are some theological implications to the universe having a beginning. Mm hmm. Okay. So, so I, I, I still don't understand. So is is what you're saying right now that because somebody who was a Christian came up with the hypothesis of the Big Bang Theory, therefore, the original hypothesis uh, of the Big no, Bang Theory, therefore, say, Christianity is affirmed? Would, no, I would not okay. say Christianity. I'm not, I'm not following then. The, how that's the response. But I, it's interesting to see that the Big Bang prevailed in light of um, people, the very people who opposed it were people who saw theological implications to the universe having a beginning. Okay, um, what people are those people? Not want God, yeah, they did not uh, think, want God to exist. So um, they thought having a beginning of the universe would leave room for God's existence and the Big Bang eventually prevailed. So you think that That's people argued right. against it because they didn't want God to exist? Is that is that the position that you think atheists have, is that we don't want God to exist? Um, I would say some, some of them do, some, some of them don't. Um, Why? Because it seems almost like you're assuming those people's too. positions. Like, what evidence do you have that the people that, that spoke out against the Big Bang Theory did so because their motivation was that they didn't want there to be um, evidence that God existed. Uh, I would say, please watch uh, the uh, debate that, King, and I actually agreed with King Crocoduck on this one point. Uh, okay. Um, please watch uh, Kent Hovind's third debate with King Crocoduck, where he actually brought up the uh, scholarship on that on that topic. Kent Hovind brought up some scholarship. No, no, no. Oh, God. No, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. um, my brain almost exploded. Saying, what? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> Hoven is totally oblivious to probably reality. Anything <laughs> oh, can't Hoven. I mean, yeah, I mean, I give him. You know, I mean, you gotta give him credit. You gotta give him credit. He's been locked up for nine years and now touched from uh, the outside world for um, over ten years. I mean, uh, it was bonkers I before mean, that. I mean, you gotta give him. You gotta give him room, but um, but I think he has a lot of catching up to do um, in that regard, and a lot of repenting to do. But um, oh, he needs a new another, slideshow. That's another topic. <laughs> it's a brand new slideshow that guy he needs to retire his old slideshow and get a brand new one yes. so okay back to the back to this though sorry so Kent Hovind abuses me um so I, I still don't understand so many things <laughs> every time oh, I have a I conversation the Bible I raise objections and I just I find that I'm either told to read a book or yeah. or I'm told well, watch this thing, yeah. or or yeah. I'm told. Well, based on my interpretation of it, yeah. yeah. Well, well. Do, you, do you see how it's hard for me to reconcile myself with that stuff? Like, I oh, went through I mean, a phase in my life where I I wanted desperately nothing more than to believe what I already believed, yeah, I to continue believing it, and I I got to the point where yeah. you don't choose what you believe, or I just couldn't anymore. I just couldn't. I just couldn't. I, I read too much. I had too many unanswered questions, and and too many things contradicted themselves, and too many thing, too many moral questions. It was the moral questions that really, really just drove me away. Like it, it, reconciling myself with the things God Himself did. Like I mean, God committing genocide on multiple occasions. Like, like that, I found that rough, <laughs> right? God commanding other people to kill. Mm -hmm. Right, the slavery. You know the rules around rape. I mean, if this book is supposed to be our moral code, 
it's some of those uh some of those uh laws that are given in uh i think in deuteronomy and uh leviticus mm -hmm. a lot of them were uh man's laws uh where um how do you know the difference? How do you know the difference between what's dictated by God and and that's a, that's a, that's a theory, but um, I would say um, Galatians three actually has the answer. You know, um, when you're talking about, I'm assuming you're talking about the Levitical laws that most of them uh, for for uh, sins uh require a certain death penalty right some of those yeah well yeah that, that's one of the yeah, things that's referring to there's more them. examples than that but yeah most of them uh mm -hmm. require the death penalty and you know yeah like gathering I, sticks I, on a what is it saturday or sunday <laughs> death <laughs> kill it <laughs> it has sticks kill it mm. and they did uh, there's you know, right to the priest i mean the like, best answer i mean you know the best answer uh for me um for me intellectually would be you know uh the old uh, that was an old uh, that was an old law christ came and fulfilled that law and actually in galatians 3 it tells us what the purpose of that law is it is to tell us that um we are it is actually to illustrate us to us the gospel um that um that we are sinners uh, that are worthy of death, but Christ redeemed us from that law. But so didn't Christ say that he that came Christ not to came. change the law, like that not a jot or tittle of the old law was to be changed? He came not to change, but, but to fulfill? all should be fulfilled. All should be fulfilled. Okay. I think that death Does that mean that that abolished the law? No. He abolished, I think he abolished the death penalty. I don't think he changed the law at all. Okay, so it's that. it's the, I think that, that I struggle with it means that this is the way what that sounds like to me is that this is the way that I personally reconciled myself with that particular difficult thing to reconcile yourself with is that this and is the actually, thing I tell uh, myself so that it's okay no this is not the thing that I tell myself I get this from the writings of Paul um Paul mentioned this uh the few, you know the apostle Paul right okay. <laughs> yeah um, okay the Apostle Paul oh. was really big on uh, justification by grace through faith, and that the old law was um, was in fact um, that the punishments of the old law were in fact done away with, but were in fact used as a tool to make us recognize the point of Galatians three that we are all sinners in need of a savior. So, whoa, okay. Yeah. Whoa. So, so God mandated, you know, killing people for a bunch of different stuff so that, so that he could prove to us that we needed a savior so that we would be ready to accept a savior. He spent thousands of years just, you know, arbitrating atrocities amongst the people he created so that the people he well, created would the, be ready to receive a savior? Well, well what did the uh, old law say? The old Which law ones? Says you sin, you die. Yeah. You sin, you die. Right. You sin, you die. Uh-huh. Interesting, interestingly, it's reflect. So the summary of the law is actually given uh, in Romans 3.23, for the wages of sin is death. What's right. The, What's the next phrase say? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, so it changes. But, but, but why do it to begin with, though? What? Why do it? To, I still, I, I'm still finding it difficult to understand why do it to begin with. Like, why? Why would the punishments be death? Was did humans decide that the punishments would be death? Because based on my understanding, these these were doctrines that god dictated like that he he decided what the punishments would be and what the pun and what the crimes would be that merited those punishments and up to and including death and in most cases it was death and god also you know 
uh, helped people and told people to to kill and take and take sex slaves essentially and and to cast babies upon rocks i mean it's not even just actually um yeah i mean those specific ones i've heard them um the whole you're talking about the song where it says happy is a man that casts his babies upon the rocks um no, I don't think that it was, was actually, a song. It was. Yeah, it was. No, it, it they was went a into it. Sorry, go ahead. It was actually a, a psalm that was written, I think, about someone who committed atrocities against Israel, and those guys were happy to do that. You know. Um, well, it's not the pastor I was referring to. I can't remember it precisely, but they went. Or maybe I'm conflating too. There's definitely one where they they went into to conquer a town, and there was instructions that to to what, kill everyone like and kill the women that had known a man to to kill all the children. I, maybe like it was to stone to death I, the children, but I, I was pretty sure. Sixteen, their infants will be dashed in pieces before their eyes, and their right. houses be plundered, and their wives ravished. Isaiah that's Jesus. the one yeah and they were to, they were to rape the wives and if the if the they didn't know a man then they were to to be held and i believe uh, you could like torture them for a while and wait a couple months and then essentially have them as concubines they, i mean you, these, had, these you, were, had, you had to give them a 30-day waiting period uh, mourning period right that's right because they were they're were mourning yeah they're all of the of the children they just watched get killed Um, I do not know that passage offhand. Uh, I might have to get back to you on that, but um, I mean, those are things that God said to do. Going. Like, is that the same God? Like, people, people always. Every time I talk to a Christian, they're like, "Well, Jesus said that the rules of the Old Testament don't stand up anymore." Sure, fine. Let's say the rules don't stand up anymore. Was that the same God? Because he, he still. If it was the same God in both those books, he still did all that stuff. Hmm. He still did all that stuff. It was it's either a different god or God changed his nature. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um it's, what, think then it what is it? Under, I think it was under the old law and uh the the God is law not law under a law. law. He's God. It was under it was under it was under But a he's God. He's a, he doesn't he doesn't have to law. adhere to any laws. The laws were made were dictated for us. Under, By him. This is his actions. These are things that he did. Yeah, and and if I can, we're all we're an hour in. So uh, if I can actually throw in another one, Wyatt, First uh, Samuel fifteen one three, that's where Samuel had been talking to Saul and says to go out and strike the Amalek and devote their destruction to all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and women, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Yeah, it's it's pretty, it pretty, yeah, it was a pretty direct. Uh, commandment to go commit uh, genocide as well as kill the, uh, the the livestock. Yeah, that would that was the word of God, the Lord. Thus they say it, the Lord of Hosts. Mm -hmm. These are my problems. <laughs> no one's ever been able to give me good I answers to these found, questions. I actually found a answer on that a long time ago. I don't really remember what was. Um, I'm going to have to send you some stuff on that, but. Yeah, I didn't prepare for. I didn't prepare for this. Uh, this Me either. <laughs> yeah. But I appreciate you talking to me. I do. I know. I know these yeah. aren't easy discussions to have. And yeah, and I, I mean the discussions. I mean we could probably uh, um, have discussions on you know Christian. I mean Christianity versus atheism and. Uh, the mm -hmm. one question that um, I have for you, you're bringing up uh, moral objections, yeah. uh, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, I'm ready. I've heard this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you would consider yourself uh, a subjectivist or an objectivist? Or Subjective. How would you consider this objectivist? Uh, based subjective on with an S. Morality oh, subjective. is subjective, yeah. Okay. Um, so, oh, is it subjective? subjective? 
Why it's subjectivism and subjective morals are completely different things. Okay. Well, I'm saying I'm I believe that morality is subjective. Okay. That's what I morals are objectivism. Okay. Morally relative. Okay. Um. So the question I have is, uh, if it was right for that time period, um, why would you say it's wrong today? Um, would, why would you post a uh, your morals on um, another culture? Uh, I'm not imposing morals on another culture because that time has passed, mm. right? So I'm so looking at that culture that. through the lens of current morality. So okay, here's so here's, what, here's what I would say. Uh, you know what? You go ahead, and then I'll finish. Go ahead. So the problem with so you're saying uh, what those guys did was wrong, okay? Right. right. Sure. Okay. So, I'm saying what God did was wrong. To be clear, I'm saying what I think God did is wrong. Not even okay, just those people. No, what God did. Is, according to your own subjective morality, but what right. you think is wrong is what um, another person would think is right. Um, That's not necessarily true. But yeah. But potentially, sure. Okay, so um, um, why would you impose? I mean, Christians are uh, condemned every day for imposing their morality on the culture. So sure. I would say uh, you're doing the same thing. And that I'm not imposing. Oh, okay, so uh -huh. that's in present tense. No, th this what this one I'm gonna respond to. I know we're probably gonna go over, but I'm gonna respond to this one. So. <laughs> You're, you're confusing tenses for starters. I'm looking at what you described as a historical, an historical tense through a, a, the current standard moral lens. So the lens that, I mean, we would both agree that casting babies onto rocks based on our cor current moral understanding, yours and mine, is not okay. We don't, we don't cast babies onto rocks, right? It's not a thing that we do. Sure. Well, I'm going to use that just because it's a glaring example. Now, you're saying that me looking back in time through my current subjective understanding of morality and applying that current subjective understanding of morality to that previous time, like, you know, 5,000 years ago, isn't fair because that's me imposing my moral standard on that time frame. Well, if you were so that, no, let, just clear. let me get to finish this thought, please. And thank you, Wyatt, please. Because this one gets me a little riled. <laughs> so to me, that's evidence that morality is subjective. Because what that means, in order for this to be the case, in order for me to be imposing a different moral standard on that time frame, you and I would both have to accept that that's not okay. And we would have to admit that in that time frame, they perceived it as okay. If they perceived it as okay in that time frame, that would mean that their morality was subjectively different than the morality that we're acknowledging. Now, if that morality was different than ours today, admittedly so, because you're saying it's okay back then, because based on that time frame, it, through their perspective, through their lens and their culture, based on their understanding, they didn't see that activity as immoral. That is a, that's a tacit admission that the standards of morality are different now than they were then. And if there's a tacit admission that the standard of morality now is different than it was then, then God's objective morality dissolves. Because if, if, cause if that was moral then, and God's morality is objective, then that should still be moral now. What's up? Hey. Oh, and mute. <laughs> break time for Wyatt. <laughs> okay, Wyatt, if you need a break, we, we, we can got you. We can cover. Is he taking a break? I don't know. There's a party going on in Wyatt's room. <laughs> hey, you got a hot date tonight, Wyatt. You know, we understand. It's cool. That's race. Well, I take break dates. If you, if you need a break for a date, you go right ahead. I think you broke him, Shannon. I broke Wyatt? Oh, yeah. I didn't want to break Wyatt. I like Wyatt. I like Wyatt. No, Wyatt's Wyatt good. seems like a nice I go dude. With, you got to do what? <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of curious where he's going with this because, you know. Me too. I, I happen to, to find meta ethical theories interesting, you know, and various views from morality. I don't fully understand them. I think it's one of the most difficult subjects in philosophy, but I find them to be fascinating. Like I was thoroughly thrilled to find out something called like, I, I ever heard of ideal observer theory? 
No. It's, an, it's a meta-ethical view that's based mm -hmm. upon what would a hypothetical mm -hmm. ideal observer do. If you, if you have such a things where propositions, the sentences are propositions and they do express a truth value and, and that, that at least a few of those propositions can be true, then the ideal observer theory is basically whatever X means to be good is what an ideal observer would, would kind of do to, to, to think X is good. That's the way I kind of interpret it, which is weird because it, it's an odds with error theory, which I've been reading about reading on lately and i find error theory to be really makes a lot of sense and error theory basically says all moral propositions are untrue oh and that that there are no such thing as moral propositions because there's no such thing as a certain property like if i say stealing is wrong mm -hmm. then okay. you can't instantiate the pro the, the word wrong with property wrongness because there is no such property of wrongness it's called argument from queerness and i've been reading up on that because I was asking Ozzy and, and Darwin's Greatest Hits and other people for information on Mackey's oh. Darwin uh, error theory. And I thought it to be very interesting. It's a very interesting moral um, meta-ethical theory. And I think that when, when you have somebody who's a Christian that just says, look, the only way you can have morals if you, if you have objective morality and it must be grounded in a deity, I think they negate all other meta-ethical views and by fiat. And I'm not sure why they, they do that. It's like they just assume none of them are valid. Yeah. Okay. Why it's back. back. Why it's back. Why it had to leave. <laughs> Why it had to go outside. Why? Yeah. Wow. You did, did you like I did live you with outside? roommates, all right. <laughs> Would you just like inside? Did you like do like some magical transport trans uh, porting or something? No, I you saw me walk through uh the I halls, looked, right? No, I was I was I was actually looking at Shannon. I was paying talking to her, so I wasn't really paying attention. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Carry on. Right. And hopefully, I, I explain that meta-ethical stuff. Well, I like it actually but, outside more. Uh, explains uh, God's nature. Explains, <laughs> oh, uh, Wyatt! <laughs> Look at the trees. <laughs> Look at the trees. Okay. Look at the trees. And, and let me clarify, by the way, for Shannon, you are you you suggest that all types of morality is objective. I mean, you do agree there's like descriptive moral relativism, where certain cultures do have, you know, uh, things about about morals. But are you are you advocating the position that it's only subjective morality that all that's the only thing that can exist or you can have some objective morality as well you just don't need a god for it uh i think th i think that objective morality is a bit of an illusion i think there's certain things that we all agree upon that are immoral and i think a lot of those things have to do with either self or group preservation so we all unilaterally recognize them would that would that make it a more would that make it objective though if, that, if you're that's a good on, question that is a good question it, but then what what do you define as as objective then is it is it the fact that there's a majority group consensus no i think it would go to the harm's benefit i think it'd be like the sam harris approach sure yeah that this is probably a, di a different discussion for a different day but i i can see that I mean, I'm not, by no means a philosopher. I look at things from a, either an evolutionary or psychological okay. perspective. So I see I see things through a slightly different lens than somebody who's more so interested in in the philos in the you know uh, ontological well, and philosophical. Yeah, side. Absolutely, no, I agree. I agree with you, and I, and I, it's a it's an interesting subject. Now that's why I see when I see somebody just boil it down to such simplistic things as oh, objective morality, God, and they just negate everything else. I have to kind of go, yeah. nah, it's, it's not that simple. <laughs> Right. Fact, because God, about, God said it. I like God said it. Saying, but, <laughs> but was, we can all agree that lots of it's not moral. And but poor I Wyatt. Curious. Go ahead, Wyatt. But I was curious on uh, why raise those objections if uh, morality is subjective. Because it's still morality. Oh. Okay. It's still morality. Uh, but if morality is subjective, then what's right for you may not be right for someone else. And um, sure. then if you're then uh, if you're calling that immoral, then you're doing uh, basically what um, you're um, I've heard many secularists accuse Christians of doing, which is imposing your morality on other people. Who am I imposing my morality on, though, at the moment? Well, you're imposing your morality on the biblical figures back. Then. But I can't. I can't change or dictate how they behave. Right. I can only. I can only interpret what and, what their behaviors mean based on a, a now. Like if we look at in in the current context, this is the way. If if these people were acting in this manner right now, this is how 
I would I would feel about it based on my particular moral perspective. So it's not an imposition of of my morality. It's uh, did you know the situations that went on with the Amalekites back then? Um, no, I uh, do not know the situations yeah, that went on with the, yeah. the Amalekites back then. Yes. Um, if there was sufficient ground for the. I believe that God does have sufficient more reasons for doing anything and everything that he does. Um, okay. So because he's God, it becomes moral? Which which um, horn of the youth world dilemma are you taking on that, Wyatt? I mean, does God do stuff because it's moral, or does he command things because it's moral? Yeah. I think he commands things. I think we, he commands things because he's moral. So he and I commanded think he has morally sufficient grounds for doing anything and everything he so, does. So what he commands um, on an offhand, moral. on an offhand, not having studied this uh, subject of the. Uh, uh, morally reprehensible God uh, in any way. Um, um, I've I've looked at passages such as the bears, for example. Uh, oh yeah, they made fun of the bald guy, and then the bears killed the yeah. kids. That yeah, one, yeah. That's, that's Actually, that was fun. Those guys were not kids, uh, according to the Hebrew. Those guys were young men. Okay, well then it's okay that the bears killed him because they didn't um, like somebody's bald head. Um, and those guys <laughs> yeah, were actually really standing on holy ground, which means they were like, that's the hell you want to die on? Oh my god! That. So, that, I think that's where apologetics come in, right? Oh, they weren't really kids; they were just, you know, pre-adults. But uh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's okay to kill adults for making fun of people, but not kids. That's the so, line. Those weren't those weren't kids, and uh, I, according to the Hebrew, sure. That it's still a reprehensible. I mean, it's not. If I made fun of you and you shot me in the head, that I feel like that wouldn't be a measured response to me making fun of you, which is essentially what happened in that passage. They made fun of a guy, and that was just shortly after the talking donkey, too. Like that one, that one blows my mind. There's so many talking animals, so many talking. That confuses me like all of it confuses me and the and the saying the people saying well you have to ignore the old testament because the new testament replaces it essentially so you just forget all that stuff it's like why do that why is there even an old testament then why well because we needed to set the context for what jesus was. i was like well then why was why was God doing all that stuff? I mean, he's God. Why did he have to just like create, why did he have to just make 2000 years of just like terror ridden, genocidal, like horrible, really immoral, just reprehensible like behavior? Why did he just mandate and dictate that people do just awful, awful, awful. He works in mysterious thing. ways. And then just decide, well, now my son's here, so. I guess I'll just, you know, no longer talk to people anymore and tell them to, you know, rape and murder people. And I'll, I'll just be absent now because you're all saved. Wyatt? Wyatt, I think Wyatt ran, uh, Wyatt's gone. Wyatt's I mean, just I a picture. That's a question of why doesn't, you know, God, you know, give those commandments out now why does he why does he seem to be absentee and it's yeah. not that everybody's saved I mean, that would be universalism um it's whoever believes in jesus supposedly is, is saved and and yet mm -hmm. even that criteria is hotly you know debated among christians you know is it saved, mm -hmm. saved by grace saved by works it's just believing enough you know it, it doesn't still seems to be no core consensus among christians of what it takes to even be saved i it's I know, and for people, <laughs> I'm constantly, the moral subjective, or the fact that my morality is subjective is constantly called into question. But I mean, I Christianity you. itself is I, so subjective. I don't understand the problem with subjective More morality. open to interpretation than morality. morality. Yeah, it doesn't say objective morality doesn't exist. And it, it doesn't really matter that there's so many different types of, of opinions on morality, right? If there's objective mm -hmm. facts, there's objective facts. It doesn't matter what you and I think about that, right? That's why they're objective. And right. there might be objective facts. I have no argument for or against objective facts. I do, like I said, think that error theory is interesting, saying that there are no objective facts because they're all, you know, untrue. But um, I, I, I don't really, I, I asked Ozzy this question the other day about arguments against moral, moral realism. I love Ozzy. Who, 
Yeah, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, he's yeah, you know, he's definitely my go-to person for these kinds of questions because I don't understand more arguments very well. That is that is a weak spot in my my philosophy. I, I admit that it's one of the most difficult subjects out there. Uh, it to me is morality and modal um, ontological things, modal sure. realism and all that. Don't get it. Never will understand it. It's beyond my my pay grade. Uh, have you ever looked at that stuff? Modal ontological stuff. No, I haven't. I don't read a great deal of philosophy, really. See, I, I, well, I, it's intersection with psychology, perhaps, is, is where I would enter into it a little bit, but yeah, I don't. There's an overlap there, sure. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure, yeah. or, of course. What's, there, what's the argument there's against There's an overlap of philosophy in almost any scientific like, field. Like, I had somebody ask me today, I'm just going to throw it out there because this was public. This was on Twitter, and I'm not throwing SJ under the bus any, by any means, SJ. You know, I love you, Steph. <laughs> so, SJ, you know, also known as a uh, uh, Christian apologist, she has a blog. And she's been on the non sequitur many times. She's a great, great person. I actually really like her. Don't like her some of her arguments, though. And yeah. one of the arguments mm -hmm. she had actually said to me, and I thought it was a very basal trash argument, was, well, without any kind of objective morality from grounding of God, then you can't say what Hitler did was wrong, right? That kind of really <laughs> ridiculous argumentation. I find it to be <sighs> so absurd. It's like it's 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 as though if you can't look at the the man the dictated morality of god which i think in and of itself is subjective because you can talk to any five christians and they'll all give you five different well it's based on his, 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 moral it's dilemma. Like his he is, is it subjective it's based on god's beliefs right right but, but if what i was going with that is look if if you if 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 you're saying that you have to have god that to know that god what excuse me that what hitler did was wrong then are you basing your morality on what you believe to be moral or what God believes to be moral? And if that's the mm -hmm. case, if God didn't exist, you would you inherently now be an immoral person? I don't, I don't need a deity to tell me that the Holocaust was, you know, an right. atrocity. And my morals are not based upon what God thinks of the atrocities. And but that's God when you come up with that, but God wrote the moral code on all of our hearts argument. And that's such bullshit. Which means that what does it matter if we're atheists? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good point. Look, at if it's already on our heart, which I think is an understanding of Romans one, yeah. Um, then yeah, why does it matter if you believe in God or not, right? Because you're, you're, you're just borrowing from the Christian. No, because view. we'll be condemned to hell if we don't. But and then he just but you're borrowing from their worldview, right? <sighs> Everything. Yeah. If, if it wasn't for Christianity, we need it. And by the way, no, we didn't run right off. He has a very bad connection. If you guys hadn't noticed, oh, yeah. Hi, Wyatt. And now he says Thank he shouldn't you. be the go-to person on this. It's never been his area of interest. Yeah, that might be true. Every, I mean, but I mean, I I know of a handful of people that that do know a little about these topics, and I just kind of get my most of my information from them. I admit that. Um, but I, I I don't understand a lot of the moral arguments like that. Why people would actually say, "Oh, you know, without objective morality, you can't say what Hitler did was wrong." Bullshit. That's one of the things that I find the most interesting and like to pursue the most is the more like the the moral arguments surrounding god because that's what drove me out of it was what my inability to reconcile my internal intrinsic sort of tacit morality mm -hmm. or my understanding of it with what i was seeing in god because like, a lot of i'm I more moral than god i think they based do on my a standards a lot of uh, moral manipulations in order to justify some of the things that are in the bible matter of fact uh, gymnastics um, for days I, I didn't when i was even a theist I, I think we kind of skipped over the questionable parts like i didn't remember anything about like lot's kids his two daughters you know getting him drunk and raping him i i didn't know about <laughs> i didn't even know that until like i don't know maybe a year or two ago right are you serious yeah, yeah, no, never, never even crossed my mind. Why? I just, oh, I never wow. heard of it before, right? Well, the Bible's a big book, okay, and I, you know, I, I haven't read the like, which I don't even know how that works. Like, like it. you can get a guy so drunk he passes out, and then, and then well, I think it's, a, I think it's, a story, <laughs> it's usually right? my question is, look, <laughs> wasn't it Lot's wife that she turned around and God spited her? She and, turned into a pillar of salt, right? God and told that was, her not to look back on, on right. A, so that was a worse offense than what his daughters did. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, get he that. said, "Don't look at that town." <laughs> he said, "Don't yeah, you look I, at the bottom." <laughs> I don't see how that's. But you go ahead and rape I'm, your I'm dad. Not my from that. Okay, if you look, you'll dad, be a great you're people. Moral, if you raise your father, you're okay. I, I, I don't understand <laughs> yeah. this, right? And I'm not trying to be mean or to theist like that. I just really like to know if you're getting your morality from that kind of narrative, is it really moral? Oh my God, Paul. 
silly girl. All morality is just about what's to be done with penises. The rest doesn't matter to God. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah. yeah. Well, God is <laughs> God is great male. taste in men. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> I have to go record a video, Steve. I know you do. We're going to wrap this up. Wyatt's phone died. He let me know. So we're going to wrap this up. So I do appreciate it. Um, There's not going to be any kind of after show. But if you got questions, put them in the video description. I got the links to to Shannon's channel and Wyatt's in the video description. She actually is. I'm going to make a video. When is it going to be out? I don't fucking know. Okay. Time within the next five years. No, I'm recording it tonight. So it just depends on how long the editor takes with it. Oh, it's up to the editor. Okay. Yeah. We all know who the editor is. Yeah. So she's <laughs> not me. So yeah, she went from like 500 to a thousand, like in a week or something, just because people are looking forward to this video. So I'm, I know, I think I have like 1100 or something you now, actually. Yeah. yeah, I do. I have 1110. I right, shameless plug it. Uh, I, I'm not good at that yet. I'm not used to it. Uh, it's just called Shannon Q. There you go. Shannon Q on YouTube. I don't, did you personalize <laughs> your channel yet? Or you still have the long URL? No, I didn't. I don't, I didn't do any of the things. You can personalize them. <laughs> just make it like Shannon Q. There's playlists there though, right now. And there'll be a video there probably in like the next week to week and a half. A video. All right. And I so might even make two. Tomorrow. Um, guess what happens tomorrow? Matt Dillahunty. Yes, Matt Dillahunty. And he just tweeted out uh, it today, matter of fact. So tomorrow at 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern, we have Matt Dillahunty with um, Inspiring Philosophy. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be on, is uh, religion a positive uh, influence on society? So I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully, you know, I don't know. I don't obviously don't think Matt's going to be able to stick around for the after show. If he can, great. Um, inspiring might um we'll see i do invite i have invited a, a very handful of people to the after show already so and a few other people that that uh, i haven't yet but plan to so don't feel like left out anyways guys uh leave a comment on the video description what you thought of this and by the way be nice to white white's a good kid yeah. um i don't want to dog on him at all he at least tries to to make an argument he he actually debated king crocoduck he got you know annihilated but he tried and, and and I think that is hope for him. I I've seen progress, so he's he kind of like a nice boy. Too, he's he's a nice kid. So let's not be too mad. You know, if you're gonna ask legit questions, I'll forward them to him. Okay. So. And thanks. All right. <laughs> Good night, guys. Thanks. <laughs>